Hey, hope you're having a great day. Let's continue with Ramona Forever. We met Uncle Hobart yesterday. Uncle Hobart, Uncle Hobart, let me play it, please, begged Willa Jean. The uncle placed Willa Jean's hands through the, through the straps at each end of the accordion. You squeeze it and pull out while you press the little buttons, he explained. Before he could give any more instructions, Howie grabbed his uncle by the hand and dragged him outdoors. Mrs. Kemp, sure that bones were about to be broken, followed and followed. Ramona watched through the window. Uncle Hobart hopped on the unicycle and, waving to his audience, pedaled to the corner and back. See, nothing to it, he said, once you know how. Hobart, where on earth did you learn to ride that thing? His mother called out from the front steps. In college, answered her son. Come on, Howie, it's your turn. Holding the unicycle upright with one hand, he helped Howie mount the seat and over this mount the seat over the single wheel. Now pedal, he directed. Howie pedaled. The unicycle tipped forward, setting Howie down on the sidewalk. Indoors, Willa Jean struggled with the accordion, too heavy for her, and made it give out a loud groan as if it were in pain. No, not that way, Ramona heard Uncle Hobart say. It's like riding a bicycle. Instead of balancing sideways, you have to balance back and forth at the same time. With a flushed and determined face, Howie mounted the unicycle again. If he learns to ride it, Maybe he'll let me ride his bicycle, thought Ramona, who longed for a bicycle, even a second-hand, three-speed bicycle. Howie tipped over backward into his uncle's arms. The accordion squawked. Ramona felt rather lonely, left out, even in the way. Hobart, do be careful, shouted Mrs. Kemp above the squawk and screech of Willa Jean's playing. Ramona could see that learning to ride a unicycle was going to take time, so she turned her attention to Willa Jean and the accordion. Willa Jean set her gift on the floor and sat down on her camel saddle with a scowl. It's too big and it won't play music. Let me try. Ramona was sure she could make music come out of the accordion. It looked easy. She slipped her hands through the straps. The only song she could think of, unfortunately, was the Ramona song. She pumped and pushed the buttons only produ to produce the cry of a suffering accordion. She tried pushing different buttons while she pushed the bellows in and out. Hee-haw, hee-haw. This was not the music Ramona had in mind. Maybe your uncle can show you how when he has more time, she told Willa Jean as she set the, the, the accordion down carefully on Howie's camel saddle. From outside, Mrs. Kemp's warnings continued. Hobart, Howie, be careful. Ramona and Willa Jean stood by the window to watch Howie, protected by his uncle, actually ride a few feet before he pitched forward onto the sidewalk. I did it, he shouted. He's going to learn to ride it, thought Ramona, and I'll get to ride his bicycle. Willa Jean returned to the accordion as if it might have learned to play while she let it rest. But no, it went right on shrieking and groaning. I know I'll make it play, she said. Ramona turned from the window in time to see Willa Jean decide to set her accordion on one end of the floor. Holding it down with one foot through the strap, she used both hands to stretch it up as high as she could pull it. Then... As Ramona understood what she was about to do and tried to grab her, Willa, Willa Jean quickly took her foot out of the strap, turned, and sat on the upended accordion, and even lifted both feet off the floor. As she sank down, the accordion uttered one long, loud screech, as if it were dying in agony. Not a good idea. Who do you think is going to get blamed for that? Willa Jean, cried Ramona, horrified and delighted by the dreadful piercing noise that left her ears ringing. Willa Jean jumped up beaming. The accordion, Ramona could see, would never rise again. 
Its bellows had split, silencing it forever. You broke it, Ramona said, knowing she might have done the same thing at Willa Jean's age. I don't care, said Willa Jean. I made a big noise and now I don't even want it anymore. Mrs. Kemp burst in to see what had happened. You naughty girls, she cried when she saw the remains of the present. But I didn't do it, protested Ramona. It's not my fault. An expensive musical instrument ruined, said Mrs. Kemp. Ramona, you're a big girl. You should know better than to let Willa Jean break it. She turned to her granddaughter. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No, said Willa Jean. It's a dumb old thing that wouldn't play. Willa Jean, go to your room, ordered Mrs. Kemp, who usually felt that anything Willa, Je Willa Jean did or said was cute, sweet, or adorable. I'm ashamed of you spoiling your nice uncle's homecoming. Scowling, Willa Jean did as she was told. Mrs. Kemp turned to Ramona. As for you, young lady, you sit on a chair until your mother comes for you. Ramona sat, and Ramona seethed, angry at the unfairness of all that had happened. Why should she have to look after Willa Jean when her mother paid Mrs. Kemp to look after Ramona? And Uncle Hobart was just plain dumb to give a little girl something she couldn't use until she was older. But then grown-ups often did things like that. Ramona knew she had been given books to grow into, and by the time she had grown into them, they had lain around so long they no longer looked interesting. But an accordion? Growing up to an accordion would take forever. Outside, other children had come to watch how he learned to ride his unicycle. Ramona could hear shouts and laughing, and once in a while, a cheer. It isn't fair, thought Ramona. Even though grown-ups were always telling her life was not fair, it wasn't fair that life wasn't fair. Ramona watched Mrs. Kemp lovingly polish her new brass tray and coffee pot from Saudi Arabia. Ping, 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 went the timer on the kitchen stove. Howie burst in crying, one knee of his jeans bloody. Uncle Hobart followed with the unicycle. The afternoon was not fair, but neither was it boring. Oh my goodness, cried Mrs. Kemp. I knew this would happen. I just knew he would get hurt on that contraption. All right, we'll stop there. See you tomorrow.